let me just set the scene before we get into the, the panelists. Um, the Tetra Association every year tries to collect statistics about number of installed systems. And this is our, our current pie chart showing essentially public safety is still the largest segment where networks have been deployed. But if I take out of that public safety, military, and government, still 57% of the systems deployed around the world today are in the commercial sector. So the first thing is, that's the first myth I want to get rid of. It is not just for public safety and military. Okay, so my panel today, um, these august gentlemen here on my right, I think between them they are probably responsible for delivering most of those 57% of those systems around the world into the commercial sector. So um, I'm going to ask them all a question uh, to start with, then I'll go around and ask them all some general questions. So I'm going to start with hands. Um, hands, you may. It's often perceived, and, and this morning would have emphasized that more than anything, that Tetra can be very, very complex. So the question I've got for hands is, is it true that Tetra is too complex for commercial users? What's your view? I think it's a pity that Tetra have got that reputation. That's widely based on that the initial implementation of Tetra was based on big centralized switches. So that's definitely not the case today. Today you can uh, make use of the advantage of all the features of Tetra on very small systems. Actually, we dem demonstrate the setup of a complete Tetra system in just half an hour on the boot out there where you can see, see it. Today, uh, you can get decentralized systems where complete Tetra system with all the features only consist of uh, one or two boxes where you have everything. This is a quite small system, but it's just still scalable. You are able to expand that to several hundred base station sites. You can uh, expand it to a lot of nodes uh, of, of, uh, of subscribers as well, and you've got all the uh, advanced features of Tetra. And due to the advance in IP communication, it's now very easy to connect all these things together due to, to the use of IP communication. We demonstrate on the boot here where we have a, a base station running. We have uh, several base stations connected to the same. In Denmark, we even have a base station running in uh, Thailand, which is connected to the same network, thanks to the advance of IP network, which makes it very simple to set up. So definitely, uh, Tetra today is quite simple to set up, and commercial users have the chance to get all the features uh, they got on uh, public safety networks. Okay. So what you're saying, I think if I read, actually I've read your bullet points as well from that, it says that essentially for commercial users, as far as you're concerned, it has to be very easy to install and operate, and it's proven today that that's possible. It's easy to expand from one user on one base station up to thousands and thousands of users on many base exactly. stations. And so people can grow incrementally as their business changes. And essentially, there's a need to make sure the total cost of ownership is controlled and competitive. Which, which would lead me on to the, the next question, which I should put to Animesh. It's also being touted around the market today that really DMR is the solution for, um, for commercial users. What's that, your view on that one, Animesh? Well, um, to start with, I think. Uh, we don't see DMR really as, as, uh, as a major threat. In fact, I think they are complementary because I don't think, uh, I mean, the, the, the segments of the market which DMR is actually targeting and also their, their main uh, uh, USP, if you like, is, is, is transitional. So uh, I think uh, uh, basically the, the seg market segments in the commercial sector which we, uh, Tetra is targeting is is, is slightly different. There, there are areas of some overlap, but uh, um, I, I think uh, they are quite different. And uh, secondly, I think uh, the DMR um, is still in a, in a development phase. It's, uh, uh, Tetra is far more mature, and uh, it's probably uh, uh, better value uh, for, for, the, for the clients to go for Tetra uh, because of its uh, several features which DMR doesn't offer. And uh, it's probably more value for money to go for Tetra. And our own experience, uh, I mean, um, uh, as, as you can see from, from the, I mean, you know, one picture is more than a thousand words. So, uh, um, you know, we have, we have done uh, quite a lot of commercial uh, 
installations and uh, uh, around the world. Um, um, you, you know, some of the ones which are highlighted here, one is the Turkish highways, uh, which is probably the first highways uh, sector application uh, in, uh, in the world. I'm not sure about that, but uh, um, uh, Turkish highways has gone for a Tetra system. It's a seven site uh, network at the moment, which covers about 3,000 kilometers. And they have, in this Izmir area itself, there's about 50,000 kilometers to cover. So, so as Hans had mentioned already, that flexibility is, is a very important factor in, in commercial applications. And uh, with the system must be capable of uh, easy expandability, um, uh, uh, you know, within the, uh, so size, you know, in the commercial sector, size is very important. You have to start with small size and be able to expand gradually fitting the customer's budgets, meeting the customer's yearly budgets on a gradual manner. And this is where the technology comes in, where, uh, uh, I mean, Hans has again uh, mentioned, you know, about the, I think, the distributed uh, uh, architecture uh, network, where, um, uh, I mean, uh, as you might know, Artiware was, was the first uh, to actually launch this, this uh, technology. It was way back in 1997 when I think we did uh, for the uh, one of the mountain rescue uh, ones uh, that was uh, still uh, when, when it was still known as Simoko. And uh, so uh, therefore we, we have a lot of experience in this in this field in, in, in you know in the steel industry in um, events and entertainment because we the, the previous speakers spoke about the events and entertainment metro rail transport sector as was shown in the slide uh, which Roger showed about uh, the distribution, transport is, is a major sector in the commercial area, uh, which is uh, expanding. So um, I, I think uh, it's basically size, uh, flexibility, and uh, total cost of operation, which is important in the commercial sector. OK, thank you. Let me just pick up on um, uh, the, you mentioned um, IP again, and Hans mentioned IP. Let me just put it to Bert, because I know this is one of his favorite topics. Voice over IP or Tetra over IP, I'm told, is really just for big systems. Discuss, knock me down. What's your view? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, can okay. I, can you hear me? Okay. Yes, Tetra over IP for big systems. Uh, some co uh, manufacturers think this is the way forward, and it is true. Uh, IP, for, it is both important for small and large networks. Uh, we have to look at two aspects here. The first aspect is... Uh, IP can be based on commercial off the shelf. This makes it makes it more cost effective. One reason, and also the component obsolescence issues are not there if it's an open IP solution. So these are two very uh, big advantages of using IP. It is flexible, as already uh, mentioned by the earlier speakers. Uh, it gives you a lot of integration opportunities. The second aspect is. Is it really an open IP solution? We believe that you can only benefit from IP if it's an open solution, not propriety, but an open solution. And secondly, also the architecture counts. It is important that the architecture is designed in such a way that it is scalable from very small to very big. We have proven that. I think this, okay, this one reference is shown here. Uh, it can be done for even one single base station. I believe this system is installed with three carriers, so it has quite some capacity. This is for uh, uh, one of our end users, Endeavor, in Belgium, a system supplied by SIET Zenital. In, and this proves that uh, Tetra can be cost effective, uh, very small to very big, if you choose the right solution. Thank you. I mean, I think we're almost in danger of just repeating the same stories if we're not careful amongst ourselves here. So I'm going to change the subject significantly now, and I'm going to ask Thomas. Tetra has a number of data transport mechanisms from um, status messaging, SDSs, packet data, and so on. How important are the applications to the commercial users, and is there a killer app? Yes, uh, I think that's one of the most important uh, thing in the commercial sector to also be able to integrate important uh, applications to increase efficiency in the processes. I brought with me three examples. Uh, one is uh, for the city of Bamberg, where uh, ITCS system for the public transport uh, is integrated with the Tetra infrastructure uh, from 3T. We accelerated the bus uh, lines there by introducing 
an application which switches, triggers the traffic lights uh, in less than one second the bus driver is able or the board computer in the bus is able to switch the traffic light uh, at the next uh, street. Uh, another example would be a, a power plant in, in Germany. Uh, there we added a uh, data application where the loading of the trains is transmitted to the control center so they can improve the, the process uh, immediately in the power plant as they know exactly which amount of coal will arrive. Uh, and last but not least, also airports is a very important sector where a lot of additional applications besides AVL, uh, also for the resource management of baggage handling or uh, cleaning teams can be easily controlled by quite simple data applications which don't really need an, a massive amount of data. Um, maybe one thing uh, I, uh, I found out and it's our experience that most of the users at the beginning have uh, a negative mindset uh, and uh, say data communication via Tetra, that's not possible. Uh, and there it's our task to go through an analysis of the traffic uh, requirements with them and very often at the end uh, we find out that the amount of data isn't that much uh, which is needed. The number of users uh, is not uh, that high that it could uh, overload a, a Tetra network and as we also heard at the beginning, because of low budgets at the, uh, at the beginning of a project, uh, it's very important that the network is able to grow during the time that uh, you are able to implement the network with a single site, maybe single carrier at the beginning and expand it over the time uh, with an IP-based network uh, because these are the things which really make it easy for also commercial customer to introduce the Petra uh, technology in their field. So, so one, of the, one of the things I'm beginning to hear is from a number of you that as a business grows, you can easily expand your Tetra systems to, to uh, suit that business needs. So right. you don't have to put it all in at day one. Yes. So no. okay. it uh, can really start with a single carrier, single site, uh, base station and the extras uh, system also can be expanded to several hundreds uh, base station and there is no difference in the technology, there is no difference in the functionality, uh, the features it has, so it's an easy way to start with a low budget uh, project uh, with a single site and then increase it from year to year. Uh, let me pick up on something that was, was mentioned earlier and I'll direct this one to Dirk. Um, the word COTS, commercial off the shelf, was mentioned a couple of times. To some people that means the manufacturers make a cheaper system. What's it mean for a commercial user, Dirk? I think uh, commercial off the shelf uh, components are a logical coexistence with commercial users, especially if you have uh, uh, transferred your whole infrastructure for Tetra into a full IP system, then more and more you meet the demands of commercial users by uh, taking more and more uh, commercial off the shelf components in it. And it, it, it starts, of course, uh, because you are more and more integrating into IT systems from, from the commercial customers. And the IT guys, of course, appreciate it very much uh, to have the same routers and the same switching environment, uh, and, and they simply extend their IT environment with, uh, uh, with the radio, with Tetra uh, solutions in that respect. Uh, but demands uh, are not going only in the direction uh, of IP. Simply in this uh, example here for Entropia, the leading network operator, which is, let's say, uh, one of the challenge most challenging uh, customers in the commercial sector, I would say, the commercial operators. Uh, they have a lot of demands and they need to cover a lot of uh, different customer needs. And it starts by simply integrating uh, your existing infrastructure 
uh, in racks existing at the at, at the operator already, and um, it goes uh, to routers. It goes to simple components which they need to have uh, for putting on it more applications. Uh, as I see, Tetra also as an application. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to stop you talking about Entropia anymore because they have a full presentation straight after this. So, uh, so I, I, if I yes. stop at that one on that point. Yes. Um, I, I've now got a couple of questions for all of you, so I'll take them along through the end. Uh, the first one is that many of you might or might not have noticed that recently the um, FCC in the US announced that it was going to waive some, some of its rules so that we can now type approve Tetra products in the US and make them available to the commercial market. Let me ask, I'll start with Thomas. Um, is that significant? Do the commercial users in the States need Tetra? And the other thing is, what is your company going to do about it? Yeah, I think uh, it is. Uh, it's a, a big step now uh, for the Tetra community uh, to come to, to North America. And we know already that uh, several uh, commercial users are interested in uh, Tetra equipment. Uh, we received the first RFI, so we will uh, definitely uh, also go to the North American market and uh, okay. give them also the possibility to work now with a Tetra network. Animesh, your, your views on the US? I think uh, um, uh, probably, uh, uh, I, I mean, even FCC has mentioned that probably that uh, the focus in the American market is on the commercial sector. And I think the, uh, the American market is, 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 is very large. Uh, as a company, certainly we'll be looking into, into the American market. And uh, uh, I think there's, there's space for every Tetra manufacturer there. It's so huge. Okay. Uh, Hans, want to comment on the US? I can confirm we will go there as well, yes, and I think the biggest challenge is to get Tetra promoted over there so Americans learn what Tetra is and what all features they can get of Tetra because I think this is a big challenge to learn them uh, how efficient Tetra is, what they really can get. And I think if they are seeing what they all can get for uh, their money in Tetra systems, so then it has uh, a bright future. You're, you're almost implying TWC should go to the States. Anyway, we'll, we'll leave that one for a minute. So, your, your view? Yeah, I can say we are already in the US. We have uh, in, in Green Bay a uh, Tetra demonstration with three cells and showing to the public, to everybody who wants to see it with our local partner Nielsen e Electronics, uh, how Tetra works and, and the efficiency and especially it was a surprising for a lot of users which were used to uh, analog systems that the coverage of Tetra is nearly the same as in the analog world. This was very surprising and they are, and the feedback is very, uh, very high and the expectations are very high so we are seeing, are looking forward into a huge business in that area. And Bert? Yes, we, will. we also will be definitely there. We have done, uh, we have worked on the initiative for some time now. Uh, it's going very fast now, developments uh, within the market of the United States. And, uh, but we also have to manage a little bit uh, the expectations. Uh, people are uh, used to uh, very high levels of output power. And that means that they expect a, a coverage of, let's say, up to 50, uh, 80 kilometers. That cannot be realized. On the other hand, the equipment is much lower cost, not only infrastructure, but especially also the terminals much more competitive. But they're, so, they're used to spending. Yeah, so they can spend a much more, <laughs> let's say they can spend the same amount on a better system and a larger number of terminals. Uh, one, more one, competition. Okay, one final question, going back to the panel the other way. A uh, very short one. Is there a killer app that will suit the States or anywhere else in the world? Because I didn't really get that question answered early. I mean, no one seems to have found something that really, really switches everyone on to Tetra in the data field. Yeah. The data is, uh, is uh, the, let's say, the data features in Tetra are far better than what you now can get from uh, APCO and DMR. So there's definitely an improvement to use Tetra instead of APCO and DMR. Uh, Tetra is fully featured in comparison. Okay. But you haven't, you, haven't, you haven't found a killer app per se. It's, 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 it's really solutions for individual sectors, segments, types of users. There are killer applications or applications basically in utilities. This is very important. Uh, to uh, promote Tetra in that market space. Uh, we believe that that is, and also on plants, like nuclear plants or uh, uh, factories, 
we believe that there is a great future okay. for Tetra. All right, thanks. Dirk, do you want to make a quick comment on data first? Uh, real killer application is still a challenge, as we heard in the morning. Um, I would say fleet management is still a big issue also in the United States with the, with the big area. Uh, we see more and more the demands in the equipment itself, in the infrastructure, in the flexibility, because they are not used to have full boxes. They have own environment where they must integrate our equipment, and this are a little bit different challenges what we meet here. Hans, a quick, quick comment on the slides and data? I think the need for data will be there when uh, the availability is there, and uh, the availability can easily be be there as using the commercial wideband network uh, integrated with Tetra. That's, I think, it's uh, the fast way to go to offer people uh, wideband data. And then the need will come when it's there. It's almost back to your uh, education again as well. Animesh. I, I think, uh, uh, yes, for the commercial sector, uh, data is, 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 is a very important uh, part of it. Uh, there are uh, several data applications which, uh, from our experience, we have seen from, from the variety of uh, uh, commercial applications that we have. Uh, but I think Thomas had referred to this earlier, that uh, the data speeds which are currently available on the SDS is, is good enough for our several applications uh, which most of the commercial users uh, need, you know, for example, alarm systems, intrusions, yeah. temperature measurements, uh, you, you know, like in the Turkish highways. So, that, so you're saying if they need what we're supplying elsewhere in the world? Yes. Thomas, quick one. Yeah, I think uh, I can only emphasize what we already heard. Uh, of course, there is a limited bandwidth and uh, our restrictions, and uh, the challenge is to analyze together with the customer the requirements and go through the, the needs for the data communication. Uh, this may be also especially a challenge in North America because there a Tetra with all the features might be an even bigger step uh, in uh, flexibility and, and feature richness. Uh, so that's the important thing to analyze uh, the need at the beginning and then find uh, the right From what I'm hearing size. is there's, there's still plenty of opportunities all around the world as well as potentially new markets for commercial users to use Tetra. Yes, well, yep. we all agree. Okay, I think, think we're running out of time here, so uh, we just want to thank our panelists for their, for their, for their answers. Thank you very much. <laughs>